Hi, this is Dr. Andrew Chrysler, teaching communication systems at Idaho State University. In this series of videos, we're going to be discussing signal power and power spectral density. We're going to be using concepts that you can find in the Modern Digital and Analog Communication Systems textbook. So in this series of videos, we're going to look at a, a short review of energy and power signals. And this is because the way that we derived uh, energy signal concepts, we're going to take the understanding from the energy signal concepts and we're going to find a way to apply it to power signals. So there's a, a close relationship between energy and power signals. And the way that we derived the energy signal item, so energy signal density, we're going to take that method and we're going to find the power signal density. Uh, similarly, we're going to see why it's useful to understand the time autocorrelation function and what this means in regards to power signals. And we're going to build that up using our energy signal knowledge. Then we're going to shortly look at the input power signal density versus output power signal density. And then just like we looked at the energy of modulated signals, we're going to look at the power signal density of modulated signals. As a quick refresher, energy signal densities are uh, or energy signals are signals in which you can define an integral from minus infinity to infinity where that function squared is going to be equal to a finite number. So energy signals typically uh, approach zero or are equal to zero for some very large period of time. So for example, right, this one is equal to zero from here all the way to infinity. So for an infinite amount of time in these directions, it's equal to zero. This signal, it just approaches zero. But either way, when you take this integral, you will get a finite number. Power signals, on the other hand, uh, are uh, have an infinite amount of energy, and that's because they continue to oscillate and they don't have this, this type of uh, behavior where they are equal to zero or approach zero for a long amount of time. So power signals might look something like this, and we'll need to treat power signals slightly differently. Typically, you uh, break them down into a shorter period and use a, a limiting function to deal with them. And so most of the concepts from the energy signals, uh, that you would get an infinite answer if you derive them using the power, uh, if you use a, took a power signal and tried to apply it here. But there's a bunch of uh, special tricks we can use for power signals so that we can make uh, related concepts to the energy signals and we can deal with the signals in a similar way. So that is what the um, these series of videos is going to cover.